This would be the first time that I have ever done a meal prep while drinking. with Time to Shrink. Welcome back to another meal prep. Today we're going to do a lot of Southwest Mexican type flavors with cilantro and lime and jalapenos. So let's jump into it. Let me show you what we're using. We are going to use our oven today. I am not sure about it because it's so hot outside, but we need to make a couple things. So we're going to make high key biscuits for a meal later this week, I'm gonna do biscuits and gravy tomorrow night. So I'm gonna make biscuit mix. I have not used this one yet, so we shall see how it works out. Chipmunk is my absolute favorite, hands down, the best cookies I've ever made in the gluten-free slash keto world. So these are going to be espresso chocolate. We have not made this yet. They did send this to me, y'all, to try, but we have yet to make one that we were not like, freaking in love with. So it's just the mix, butter, and an egg. Same with the biscuit mix, mix, butter, and egg. We are going to make some bacon blue cheese buffalo dip. We kind of make that on repeat right now. We are actually gonna use rotisserie chicken for it because I have some. We are going to make a cilantro, avocado, lime, jalapeno concoction for coleslaw this week. Y'all know I always do something different. And then we are going to make some jalapeno, jalapeno popper Hasselback chicken, basically. So we're gonna take this chicken and we are going to do it Hasselback style with cream cheese and jalapenos and cilantro. And then we're gonna wrap it in bacon and we're gonna cook it in the air fryer. And to go with that, we are going to make a cilantro lime crema sauce with jalapeno, and we're also going to do a Mexican collie rice. So for my Mexican collie rice, I use tomato paste and some butter and some smoky Southwest. And then this avocado needs to be used, so we are going to use this. Traditionally, I do a jalapeno lime crema sauce, and I'm gonna add avocado to it because we need to use this up, and that should be delicious. So that's the plan, let's get rolling. Also, we've got some bacon just finishing back here. We're gonna need this for our buffalo bacon blue cheese dip. I just have to tell you before we get started that today has been a day. This is our third video that we filmed today. Fourth, fourth video. Fourth video that we filmed today. I don't usually batch film. I usually film as we go, but we are gonna be going on a vacation. When you see this, we'll have been back home but we're trying to batch a little bit today in our filming. So we are filming yet another meal prep. I've also filmed what I eat in a day. We filmed a time to drink, which is something we do every Friday night. We have a new series. I think we're on episode seven, maybe, of time to drink. And we filmed that in between meal preps. And Jason made some amazing daiquiris. Go watch that. I'll link it right here above in the iCards. He made a rum sour and a daiquiri, and the day that I've had today, y'all, I don't usually drink in meal prep, but it's going down. And we are gonna have a successful meal prep. I'm putting it out there in the universe. This is gonna be successful. Everything I'm making is in my wheelhouse. No, I haven't made all of these things before, but they're all from my brain and in my wheelhouse versus following recipes. Sometimes we get really hung up on recipes. Like last meal prep, y'all go watch it. You It will have been up last Sunday. I made Cincinnati chili, totally made it before, but I think I got to a different recipe and apparently one of the things they do up north is boil beef, which I've never heard of in my entire life. So I put all this water into my Cincinnati chili because I cooked my beef ahead of time because that's what you do. But apparently in the north, they boil it like in water. I, I've never heard of that in my entire life, but it turned out it ended up being really, really good. It was more like a Cincinnati chili stew, but it was so good. You totally want to go watch that recipe. And a few weeks back, I made a real Cincinnati chili that was the way it was supposed to be. So that's there too. Okay, let's get started, y'all. I have some frozen already cooked sausage. And I've been meaning to make biscuits and gravy for, I don't know, like four or six weeks now. That's so embarrassing, but it's been on my meal plan and it keeps getting put off and put off and put off. I don't know why, but Hi Key sent me this biscuit mix to try out. So we're gonna try it. 
It looks super, super easy. It's literally, let's see, preheat oven to 375. Let's do that. Probably crazy to be turning on my oven in the summer, but it's happening. At least it's the evening and it's been monsoon raining. So I don't know, hopefully it's not 110 degrees outside. But what we're going to do is pour one and a third cup biscuit mix into a large mixing bowl. Okay, now I'm confused. Do I not use this whole thing? Oh, that's what it is. That's what's in here. One and a third cup is what's in here, right? I guess. That's confusing. All right. I, I, I'm going to go with that. Okay. Hi, Key. Your instructions could be better. Okay. Two eggs, a fourth a cup of butter. Cut butter into a fourth inch cubes. Add butter cubes to biscuit mix. Press butter into the mix with a pastry knife or fork. Add two eggs. Mix well. Okay. Well, our butter is not cold, y'all. Because when I make the low carb biscuit company biscuit mix, they don't ask for cold butter. So what we're going to do, this is going to work. I'm going to use it the way that I've used other biscuit mixes. I am determined for things to work today, y'all. So we're going to cut it in with the pastry cutter, like it said. But when we're done mixing it, we're, this is my trick that I've learned with keto biscuit mixes is when you're done mixing it all up to put it in the refrigerator for a good 10 minutes before you bake it, it makes a huge difference. It gets the butter all nice and cold again, because like I said, I've made other keto biscuit mixes that did not call for cold butter. So I wasn't planning on needing it to be cold. Although when I make a traditional Southern biscuit, we totally use cold butter, but I was not planning that because like I said, I've made other keto biscuit mixes that did not call for that. Anyways, this pastry cutter is amazing. I absolutely love it. So we're gonna get this to where the butter's all in. And you want it into kind of like pea-sized bits, which is kind of where we are. So we're gonna set that to the side and we're gonna add two eggs. Then I'm gonna put, after I mix this, we're gonna put this entire thing into the refrigerator for a good 10 minutes before we bake it. So while this is sitting in the refrigerator, we'll go ahead and mix up our cookies. And then I've got bacon finishing up behind me. I need to check that out. That's done. Okay, bacon is finished. I love my air fryer. Do y'all love your air fryer? Oh my gosh. I feel like I need two of them. <laughs> They're so amazing, especially in Southern summers. I wonder if I could cook biscuits in it or cookies. I don't know. It would be amazing to never have to turn the oven on. And I do love that there are so many things I can cook in the air fryer. I can make meatloaf, I can make meatballs, I can make chicken, I can make chicken fingers, I can make bacon, so many things. Okay, so this is has come together completely. So I am going to go put it in the fridge and I'll be right back with you after I clean up to make cookies. Okay, these cookies say 350 and the biscuits say 375. So I think we're gonna start our lower oven at 350. Cause once one's on, why not two, right? Okay, so we need half a stick of butter, one egg and a teaspoon of vanilla. So we're just gonna plop a little bit of vanilla in there one egg and I have had their pre-made espresso chocolate chip cookies or chipmunk cookies and they were freaking delicious and I have also found that their mixes are even better than their pre-made because you know a fresh made cookie is always better even though their pre-mades that you can buy are freaking delicious this is super easy well if we can open it here we go Pulling out the big daddy knife. Oh my gosh, it smells good. So, one of the other things that I love about Chipmunk Baking Company is their ingredients are freaking clean. They are so stellar. Here's what is in this. Almond flour, allulose, cocoa powder, espresso powder, monk fruit, salt, cognac powder, psyllium husk, baking soda, and vitamin E. That's it. All completely clean. It's completely anti-inflammatory. It's completely gluten-free and they're delicious. So like I said, I haven't tried this one at home. I've tried their pre-made of this and it was great. 
They also have a lot of cookies, y'all, that don't have any nuts in them at all. They use sunflower seed flour in a lot of things. And truthfully, when they sent me their sunflower seed stuff, I was a little, mm. but then when I tasted it, they were freaking delicious. Like, I don't know how these guys do it. They're a very small new company and I highly suggest y'all give them a chance. I don't have anything special from them. I don't have an affiliate link or anything to give you down below. I will reach out to them and see if I can get any kind of discount. But like I said, they are a really new company. I think actually this week they were moving into a new building or last week and starting to be able to do more at a time. But I am super, super impressed with them, y'all. So we're gonna get this all mixed together and then we're gonna make cookies. This would be the first time that I have ever done a meal prep while drinking. It is night time, I promise. There's a clock right there. It's 7.43, completely appropriate. And if you have gone and watched Friday's episode, if you've already watched it, you will know that this daiquiri is freaking delicious. Jason did an amazing stellar job on it. And if you would like to make one, go watch that episode because the recipe will be linked. Usually I make this in the KitchenAid, not by hand, but I just didn't feel like pulling it out. But I think we're good. So Jackson, my assistant, we need parchment lined baking sheet. We forgot to get that. Okay. So this is all together, y'all. So we're just going to make, it makes a lot of kind of small rounded cookies. I'm gonna pull this out and see how many it said. 20, it makes 20 cookies. Scoop rounded teaspoons of dough. The first time I saw that, I was like, are you kidding me, teaspoons? But it really is a significant amount for, for a cookie, for their cookies. They're so, so rich that it works. So. I'm gonna take my teaspoon and make like a rounded teaspoon and we're gonna put it on our baking sheet and by the time we're done, our oven should be ready. If y'all have watched me before, you know that baking is not my thing. Oh, oven's ready. Baking is not my thing. I'm not amazing at it. They make it freaking so simple. I love a good cookie mix, especially one that's actually healthy. Like this one is so great. So I made 20 balls about equal size. We're going to put them in at 350, 350 for 12 to 15 minutes. So in our oven, probably 13 or 14. I'm going to wash my hands and then we'll put them in. All right. While my oven is finishing preheating, I'm going to throw these biscuits together. This is supposed to make 12. So I guess you can make whatever size biscuit you want, you know? but I'm trying my best to follow the recipe since I've never made these before. And as we've already stated, I am not a baker. So I'm just making balls and then I'm kind of kind of press them out a little bit. I feel like they're going to stretch out. Usually these pre-made biscuit mixes, the thing that happens very easily is that they spread out more than you want and they're like a flat biscuit which is why I cook them in the oven, which is also why I don't think I'm gonna flatten them at all. I'm gonna leave them as balls because I think they're gonna flatten themselves out. I tried to make them about the same size. So we're just gonna leave them like this. These are gonna go in a 375 degree oven for the same, about 13 to 15 minutes. So we're gonna do both for 14 minutes and then we'll check. Cause my oven usually needs the longer time. So these are going in at 375. I'm gonna put them in the middle rack. And then these are going in at 350. It says 325, but it'll be 350 in a sec. I'm gonna put these in the middle oven. Hey Siri, set a timer for 14 minutes. Thank you. Okay, 14 minutes. Thank okay. you. All right, I'm gonna pick up a little bit and we're gonna keep rolling. All right, we're gonna do like a jalapeno popper Hasselback chicken. So I'm gonna take a little bit of cream cheese and a little bit of cilantro and jalapeno and lime, and we are going to make a sauce that is going to be stuffed into the chicken, and then we're going to wrap it and bake it. 
So Jack said, I need some raw bacon because I forgot that. It's always helpful to have an assistant. You already have it out. Oh, okay. You just didn't grab it. I just didn't grab it. This is what happens when you drink while you cook. I never do this, like ever. Okay. We are just going to take about two ounces of cream cheese. We don't need all that much, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe we're going to need more than that. Let's do four ounces. Four ounces of cream cheese. And then, okay, so we've got that. We need to cut up the rest of our ingredients. We're going to take a jalapeno and dice it. We're going to use this in something else later. So I'm just going to go ahead and dice the whole thing, but I'm not going to use all of it here. We actually may make our buffalo dip with some jalapeno this time if we have enough. I like to make different variations of our same recipes. And last week I made a chicken blue cheese buffalo dip and my oldest Jackson ate the entire thing in one day. So I made buffalo dip twice last week. So we're gonna make a variation of that this week because obviously the blue cheese version using culinary lion, Frank is his name, using his blue cheese it was the best blue cheese ever. It was the best buffalo dip I've ever made too with the blue cheese in it. Y'all, you have to go check out Frank. His recipes are amazing. He's legitimately a chef. Like I like to play a chef on TV or on YouTube, but I don't have any training. You know, like this is just something I love. I'm, I'm crazy passionate about cooking. I always have been. And now I'm crazy passionate about keto cooking. And I found Frank and he is not only a chef, he does tons of smoking and all of his stuff is keto. I know. So if you're not following him on Instagram or watching his blog, he's amazing. Okay, so we've got our cream cheese. We're gonna put, I don't know, half of the jalapeno in there. We'll use this one for something else and it will just a little bit. I make a cilantro, I never know what to call it. It's like a jalapeno cilantro lime crema sauce, but we're gonna add avocado to it today and we're gonna turn that into not only a sauce, but it's also gonna be a base of a coleslaw. So I'm going to take some cilantro. I have a bunch of cilantro. So we're going to use some of it in this and some of it in our sauce and some of it in our rice. I absolutely love cilantro lime rice and making a Mexican style, like a Spanish or Mexican style. I'm, I'm sure I'm using those words wrong. I don't know if it's Mexican or Spanish or Tex-Mex or what it is, but it's like a collie rice instead of a cilantro lime rice, and it is so good. I use a little bit of tomato paste in it. I'll show you in just a little bit. But we're going to take this cilantro. I would say this is probably a good two tablespoons worth. And we're going to mix that in here. We're also going to put a little bit of fresh lime juice. I think I have some in the fridge, actually. Okay, I'm just putting a little bit of lime in here just for the flavor of it more than anything else. So, I don't know, probably a teaspoon. Smoky Southwest is going to go on the outside of our chicken. We're gonna put a little bit into this too because I really do like to flavor at every level. So probably half of a teaspoon. And this is what we're gonna stuff into our chicken. This is just going to be a meal prep. I'm gonna get it completely prepped and then I'm gonna cover it well in the refrigerator and the night that I want to cook it, I'm going to cook it in the air fryer. You could completely cook this in the oven as well, but in the air fryer, you don't have to heat up your kitchen. And I try not to run the oven. And when I run the oven, it needs to be double duty and it needs to be like in the evening, like right now. I've never made this before, just so you know. This just sounded really good to me. And these flavors are in my wheelhouse, y'all. So we're going to take some raw bacon and just have it ready here. Some of this chicken is a little bit on the frozen side still. That's okay. Put it on our cutting board. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna just kind of trim it up a little bit. And I really don't want this big of a piece. So I'm gonna cut all of these in half into like almost like tender size. 
and I kind of wish it was thicker for Hasselback, but you know what? We are going to roll with it. We are going to make it work. We are going to make it work. So Jackson, come help me for a bit. Okay, y'all, what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting into Oops. my chicken. She's just making her <laughs> Oh, well, we're going to use that bacon in this. What I'm doing is I'm cutting holes in, not holes, cutting lines or divots into my chicken, see? But I'm not going all the way through. I'm being very careful just to go part way. So as I do this, I'm going to have Jackson just give me some seasoning so that my chicken is fully seasoned. So like I said, just as many slits as you want. I usually go about an inch per, like an inch and then do another slit, another inch and do another slit. But however you want to do it, it is not an exact science by any means. I went a little too far on this cut, see? But life will go on. We're wrapping it in bacon, so that's gonna save the day. Okay, y'all, this works way better if you have thicker chicken, but my chicken was not fat today but it's still gonna taste good. We're gonna wrap it in bacon. The point is to put it in each little hole here, but my chicken wasn't super thick, but it's, it's still gonna work. We're gonna do that with each piece and then we're gonna wrap them with bacon and then we're just gonna store them until we're ready to cook them in the air fryer. Again, like I said, if you don't wanna do it in the air fryer, you wanna do it in the oven, that's totally doable as well. And then this piece here is frozen, so it's like really giving me trouble. Again, this doesn't have to be pretty, y'all. We're wrapping it in bacon. All right, our oven is going off, so Jack's gonna check that because I am deep into jalapeno and chicken. These Those look way done. They look sort of sad. Yeah, they don't look great. They did not spread out. They don't look amazing. We'll they smell how, good. We'll see how they taste. They taste good, but they did not spread out super awesome. Yeah, those cookies will jump through. Okay, perfect. Take the cookies out. Very thankful for help right now. I don't know how you do this without me. I don't either. You cannot go to college. Apparently, I would not function. Yeah, me for another year, please. Y'all, he's 18, but I have one more school year with him. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, these are done. Now we're gonna wrap them in bacon. So you're gonna take a piece of bacon. What you really want is bacon that is not cold anymore because, oh, bacon that's not super cold is more pliable. So you're gonna wrap this around really well. You may need two pieces per chicken. It depends on how big your chicken is. And we may run out of bacon, but we shall see what I'll happens. Grab another pack. All right, I almost made it. I need prosciutto for just one piece. So I'm gonna take a couple pieces of prosciutto. I don't put that up yet because there's a possibility that I'm gonna need. More. I know I think this is three pieces. I'm probably okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna wrap this in prosciutto just as you would wrap it in bacon. I think that will work just fine. I'm actually kind of curious to see how it is in the prosciutto versus the bacon. So here's what we're looking like. It just looks like chicken wrapped in bacon. You can't even tell we did the Hasselback style because of this, but taste wise, it is gonna be so good. So you could cook these now in the oven or in the air fryer. We are going to put them in the fridge with a top and when we're ready to cook them, we'll cook them. I feel like chicken does better the day of. Sometimes I pre-cook chicken, but this one we're just gonna put a top on and put in the fridge. The next thing we're gonna do is make our jalapeno cilantro lime crema. We're also gonna add some avocado to it. I love to buy these little avocado mashes from Costco. It's just avocado, sea salt, and pepper. It's organic. And when I buy avocados, I tend to not use them fast enough or they don't, they're not ready and then they're done. And I just like to buy it this way, but I have three left that need to be used. So these are going to go into our sauce today because I do not like to waste things if I can help it. Nothing is easy. Oh, did I just get you? Yeah, you got avocado. All over. Can I just spray you with avocado? Yep. <laughs> you want the small one? No, I don't want to dirty it. Here, just open that one fully for me. All right, I'm going to put two jalapenos in here. Simple. 
I'm going to take a big, huge handful of cilantro, including the leaves, put it in there. See, it doesn't come out. All right, I'm going to take all of the zest off of this lime. We usually have a plethora of limes around our house, but apparently I'm almost out, which is not good because everything I'm making today, I was planning on using lime juice for. I'm going to add a little bit of the smoky southwest to this. I don't usually do that, but I'm feeling it just a little bit. Okay. All right, we're gonna go in with some sour cream, probably about half of a cup of sour cream. You could also use yogurt here, like a plain Greek yogurt if you don't have any sour cream. All right, let's get this going. We usually have to adjust some as we go. It really depends on how spicy your jalapenos are. Some jalapenos are super spicy, some not so much. So let's see where we end up. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is push down the sides and do it one, give it one more spin. And then I usually have Jack or Caroline taste it to let me know where we are with spiciness. So let me get this one more spin and then I'm going to let Jack taste it because Caroline is at work. Caroline and I represent the extremes of the family in terms of spice tolerance. Yeah, so. Jack likes a lot of spice, Caroline not as much. There's like nothing. There's like oh, no I get spice. I some spice. I get some heat. Not a lot though. There's like none. Hold on. Let me see if I have more jalapenos. I think I do. Okay. Let's... It hit. It hit me a little late, but there's I, a little I have bit. one more. I feel like I got it. Taste it one more time, because I feel like I got some. I think it has heat. I think no, yeah, no, it has. I can taste it. Okay, I can so we're not going to add another jalapeno. No, yeah. I'm going to give it one more buzz with just a little bit more lime, and then I think we're good for this. I usually store it in these jars, so I'm going to try and get one of those out. So the added avocado makes this a little creamier. I think it's going to be a, a really nice addition. Okay, we are going to make coleslaw for the week. As y'all know, if you are OGs around here, we make coleslaw of some variety pretty much on the weekly, usually once or twice a week. So we're gonna put about half a cup of mayonnaise, about a tablespoon or two apple cider vinegar. We're gonna put some of this avocado, jalapeno, cilantro, lime, crema deliciousness. We're going to take a big spoon of that. Green two. sauce. Green sauce. It needs a better name. The name is way too long, I have to say. And then we're going to also take some raw jalapenos because this is mainly something my husband eats and he will absolutely love the heat factor. If you don't like the heat factor, you don't have to add more jalapenos, but Basically, I'm, what I'm trying to show you here is that you can make coleslaw taste a million different ways. We have not made this variety or this exact variety ever, really. So we're going to get this all stirred together, taste it, and see what we think. See if we have enough. And as always, coleslaw always tastes better after it's been in the refrigerator for a few hours, at least one hour. But I do like to give it an initial taste to see if I know right off the bat I need more stuff. Mm. This would be amazing on top of tacos. Mm. That chicken, the Hasselback chicken that I'm making with the jalapeno, if we like slice that up and put it in a taco and put this on top of it, that would be so good, y'all. Wow. All right, you're rolling. Okay, y'all, we are going to make a buffalo dip. And I was not planning on using this rotisserie chicken for buffalo dip, but that's what I'm feeling right now. So I'm just going to kind of cut it up because I don't have it in small pieces. But we are going to add cream cheese, jalapenos, bacon. So I've actually, believe it or not, I've never made my buffalo dip with jalapenos, but I'm feeling it today and we have some left. So we are going to put one full rotisserie chicken sliced up in here. Not one full. Caroline and I ate some of it the other day. We absolutely did. 
So we are going to take about a fourth a cup of sour cream because we are gonna add a good fourth of a cup of blue cheese dressing. This is the Culinary Lions blue cheese dressing that we used last week and we have some left. So we're gonna add it to this. Oh my gosh, I have to have one bite though. I could go enough to eat alone. Okay, about half a cup of Frank's hot sauce. And I have, I usually do one whole stick of cream cheese, but I only have half a stick of cream cheese, but it's, it's gonna work out, it'll be fine. We have all that blue cheese dressing in there, so it'll work out. And I usually use canned chicken from Costco, but I have that rotisserie chicken and I decided just to throw that in here. This is gonna be delicious. So we have our buffalo dip with bacon, blue cheese, and jalapenos. So something we bake pretty much on the weekly, but with this twist. I feel sure this will be gone by tomorrow evening. This is gonna be Jack's editing food. All right, we are going to make some Smoky Southwest style cilantro jalapeno rice. I don't know. Okay. This is leftover tomato paste. And when I usually take it out of this, it's still frozen. So it slides right out, but this has been sitting for a while. So, you know, I always start my tomato paste first. Or sometimes I'll do like some onions and then tomato paste, but I like to cook down the tomato paste so it gets the um, raw flavor out of it. So that's what we're doing first. And then we're going to add green giant riced veggie cauliflower. What it doesn't matter what kind, but go ahead and cook it in the microwave for a few minutes. I did about four minutes. So after we get this kind of cooked down, we will add that. Okay, so. Now that this is kind of cooked down, we're gonna add in our cauliflower. I'm also gonna add in about a fourth of a cup of water. And we're gonna start getting this combined. We're also going to add a decent amount of this. This is my favorite Smoky Southwest seasoning. It's actually a grill seasoning, but I rarely use it on the grill. I almost always use it in, well, in tons of things. It's one of my very, very favorite from Fresh Jacks but you could use any kind of taco seasoning or Southwest seasoning that you like here. Or you could simply just do cilantro and lime in addition to this. I probably should have done two bags of collie rice for this amount of tomato paste, but it's, it's, it's gonna work out. Cilantro. Now we're going in with some lime juice. This is a pretty big lime, so I'm gonna say half of the lime. And you know that like store Spanish style rice that's got the red color to it and has just that little bit of like paprika and cumin and it just tastes really great with any kind of Southwest type food. That's kind of what I'm going for here. But I had some extra cilantro, so I added that as well. So we're just gonna kind of let this cook down until there's no liquid left to it. And this will be a perfect side to that jalapeno popper, Hasselback, bacon wrapped chicken. If that's what, I don't know what we're calling it, but you know what I'm talking about, that chicken we made earlier. This is gonna be a perfect side to that later in the week and we can just heat it up. All right, y'all, I think we are done with meal prep for tonight. We made so much really good stuff. We've got our jalapeno Hasselback style chicken wrapped in bacon. This is not cooked, so we're not gonna taste this, obviously. We have our biscuits, we have our cookies. Now the biscuits, I feel like they didn't turn out looking very pretty, but I think they taste pretty darn good. I've already had half of them. The biscuits are high key. We've not had these before. Okay. I think they taste they good. Yeah. They did not really, they're not beautiful. I may have overcooked them a minute or so, but Whatever. Okay, so let's come back to the cookies. Yeah. This is jalapeno buffalo bacon dip with blue cheese. So it's a little bit different than I've ever made it before. Oh, yeah, very different. Mm. It is. We've never done jalapenos. Great. You like that? Yep. Okay. Jackson 
Oh, did you see that? We're ready to cook. I'm yeah. doing that every time. Okay, this is uh, so, cilantro, avocado, cilantro, jalapeno, lime, crema sauce, coleslaw. I thought this was good. really good. Yeah. And yeah. I, whoa, whoa. Hey, what? I'm on a streak here. You're on a streak. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too bad they can't see it. Okay, right. this is the or the Spanish style rice that I made. Probably rice. This is like the I'm cilantro. I'm up a little tough here. I got the both forks kind of this blocking is, away. Hey, I'm doing oh, something I'm here. So oh. This is like that jalapeno cilantro crema, crema that I make, but I added avocado. So take, just give it a taste. You can use bacon to taste it if you want. It's got avocado. It's I think yeah. it's still really good. It's very good. And then I've got some bacon that I made. Oh, there was some cream on it, so it down. Mm. I like that a lot. That's good. All right, cookies. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And these are these. These are chipmunk cookies. Oh, chipmunk. We always love their cookies, but we have not made this one before. Mm. Oh, good. <laughs> An espresso oh, brownie God. cookie. Oh my God. So good. They're great. I love these. These are dangerous. Yeah, I'm glad that they have really good ingredients. It'll be gone tonight. <laughs> All right. There's meal prep tonight. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you got some new ideas or some motivation to get in the kitchen and do some meal prepping. I feel like we made a lot of new things and a yes. lot of really yummy things. So I'm looking forward to this week. All right. Bye, y'all. Be blessed. See you soon.